Welcome to Coffee with Charlie, a series by Figma where I sit down and chat with the people behind the design systems at all different types of companies. In each episode, we'll take a look behind the scenes and inside the Figma file of the design system and hear about the challenges that the designer and their team faced in putting the system in place. I'm your host, Charlie Marie. I'm the creative director at ConvertKit and I'm also a design content creator here on YouTube over at Charlie Marie TV. And in this episode, I'm actually sitting down with one of my ConvertKit teammates, Alf Salib. He is a designer on our product team and alongside our two other product designers at ConvertKit, he's been working on putting a design system in place for our app. ConvertKit is email marketing and audience building software for creators and we're a small team and a design system didn't really exist previously and so one needed to be put in place. Alf and I chatted about the reasons for that. In this episode, Alf shares the challenges that they faced in, in implementing this and how we're approaching it as a small company, a small team without someone dedicated full time to a design system. Let's get into it. Hi Alf, I'm excited to talk to you today about this because um, because I'm on the marketing side at ConvertKit. I don't actually know as much as I probably should about our product design system. So I'm actually going to be learning along with everyone else watching this video today, which is going to be fun. Um, tell me about the design system for our product. When did you all, the product designers, decide to make it a focus to put a proper system in place? Um, so our official design system is still very much in its infancy at the moment. We've only really been working on it for about four to five months. Um, and that's been alongside our regular work as well. Um, but the reason we thought it was important to start working on this was we went from one designer to having three designers all working on different parts of the app and with very little overlap. Um, and on top of that, you know, I was starting to work on a new feature that we were developing, um, Convoke at Commerce. And I was finding that a lot of the existing components that I was using didn't exactly work specifically for my context. They weren't super flexible enough. So we knew that it would be important to start building this as soon as possible to avoid any inconsistencies that would inevitably you know, arise when you've got three designers working on different parts on, on a single app. So what's the process been like for putting this design system in place? What's been, I don't know, some of the, the challenges that you've hit with it so far? Um, one thing we knew would be a challenge going in is sort of dealing with the temptation to redesign things. I think, yeah. you know, even though we were building a design system from scratch almost, we were building it for a product that already exists and has existed for many years. So a lot of the stuff was sort of already established. You know, the goal isn't to restyle or redesign anything or set any new rules. Um, instead, the goal is to set rules based on what's already been established across the app and then collate information that's currently scattered. Interesting. Was that hard to stick to? Because I know every time I make a new page for our marketing site, I'm like tweaking components because I'm like, well, I feel like this could be improved. <laughs> yeah. And I think like, when, I mean, when you're going through like all these principles and components, you're bound to run into situations where you will want to change things. I think that's, you know, standard for every designer. And I think I myself am especially guilty of doing that. Um, but I think it's important to try not to lose focus of your main goal, um, which is, you know, consistency between different parts of the app or different designers. So how did you decide where to start with it? Yeah, so since we were building this whole thing from scratch, um, but based off an existing product, uh, we thought that it was, you know, it would make the most sense to start from the most basic building blocks. So basically the, the principles that would be informing our later design, des design decisions down the road, um, as well as the components that are used inside other components. So once you've got those base building blocks, you can start sort of working your way up level by level to create more complex components. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool, let's jump in and take a look around. Show us around ConvertKit's design system in Figma. Okay, so this is our app design system in Figma. It's also our library where we pull all of our components from. Uh, we've got our, you know, our styles here. We've got our type and our color palettes that we pull from. Um, and then we've got some extra sort of effects, shadows, and as well as grid styles based off different breakpoints of screens just to help out with fresh designs. And then we've sort of laid out our, our pages based off different categories. So we'll start off with the brand and we've got, you know, our logo, we've got our typography laid out with some different examples. Um, we've got our different color palettes as well as examples of where to use different shades. Um, and of course our icon library. Then we move on to foundations for different designs and the individual components themselves. So here we're sort of taking advantage of um, component variants that Figma has. So instead of having all of these different elements being different components, we can literally just pull in a single button, 
oh play gosh. around with the different styles. Do we want an icon or not? If we want a label and just a no label and just an icon, we have so much flexibility just with a single component. This has been amazing. So show me one of the one of the components that you you all started with. Where did you start actually with with components? What was the first one that you decided to design? Um, so like I said, we didn't really have you know a dedicated design system designer. There were three of us, and we sort of decided to work on the base components. We made a long list of the components that we wanted to systematize early on in this first stage. And then we sort of split that list into three. And then all three of us would be, we'd work on those components, but then we'd obviously come together each week with like a Zoom call to share what we've got, make sure everything's still in line, that we're staying consistent with each other. Um, and then we'd be, you know, pulling inspiration from one another along the way as well. So just as a quick example, we've got this typography one, which is a super simple component. Um, that a lot of people might not think to create, but you know, because of the nature of our app, it's a bit unique in the way that we have a lot of these all over the app and they show, they show up in a bunch of different ways. I think when we were doing an audit of this component, we found maybe at least 20 different styles because it doesn't really appear like it should be something that is componentized. So it's actually not, it's just basically hard coded mm -hmm. in every single instance that it appears in the app. <laughs> um, so we thought this was important to sort of you know, keep consistent. And this is sort of something that's very unique to our app, you know, because we have this kind of element appearing all over the place, we found it to be, you know, pretty high priority for us to do in our first sort of big push to build this design system. And it seems like this as well is a, another variant that you've got set up. Exactly, yeah. So we can go to stat call out here. And we've got stack call out here, and then we can switch, you know, between small and large. We can add the percentage if we want. Sometimes we've got a percentage change if it's, you know, showing a change over time. Sometimes we don't. And obviously, you know, switch the labels. Nice. Love it. Tell me a bit more about that audit process, actually. So did you go through and, like, basically take screenshots of every part of the app and be like, okay, where have we... What, what doesn't look like it should? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So after we sort of created that list of components that we wanted to create in our design system, we would do an audit. We'd go through the entire app, see when and where that, that you know, specific um, component would appear, you know, collect all of those different screenshots and see how, how it's not just what it looks like, but how it works as well in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got one component that appears in 20 different ways and it functions in 20 different ways, you're gonna have to change something in order to achieve that consistency that you want. You know, you'll have to choose that one version that works in every instance. Cool, thanks for showing us around. Um, what sort of considerations are you making with this system for, you know, fitting it in with the parts of the app that we haven't gotten to like update yet and maybe won't for for a while? What, like, how's that going? How are you reconciling that? It's It's hard to predict where the app will be going in the future and which direction it's going to take. You know, I think especially being a startup, we're prone to a lot of rapid changes. You know, we're often experimenting with different ideas. Sometimes they come into fruition, sometimes they don't. Um, so as a result, I think we want to be able to keep the design system flexible and open to change. You know, we know that it's going to evolve, evolve over time and that it's a process. It's something that's never really finished. So in the meantime, I mean, we're fine with it being a little bit messy and a little bit you know, out of sync because we have an overall vision for where we want that design system to be in the future. Um, and we're happy taking our time, getting it right, as opposed to rushing things and potentially getting things wrong along the way. Yeah, that makes sense. And also I like though that, even though you said we're, we're taking our time with the system, I like that we're not waiting until everything can be put in place to ship it all at once, that we're okay with having like newer parts of the app and older parts of the app in the meantime, so that, um, you know, we don't end up with a lot of code debt or design debt. <laughs> I think you sort of just have to just do it, take the plunge. You know, if you wait for the perfect opportunity, it's it's probably never going to arise and then you'll never get it done. You, you sort of have to be okay with things being a little bit messy just while you start the transition into this sort of systematized thinking. Cool, Th thanks for everything you've shared today, Alf, and thanks for showing us around. Um, I'm sure people really enjoyed hearing how such a small team is is tackling really what is a rather large project. So thanks for everything you shared. Thanks so much for having me, it's been great. 
Thanks again to Alf for all the advice he shared. I hope this episode was really useful for anyone else who's at a small company where perhaps there isn't a separate design systems team and you're kind of having to implement it alongside uh, all of your other work. Uh, I think Alf shared some great insights into how the team at ConvertKit are approaching that. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time for another look inside a design system. See you then. Thank you.